no matter where you are. You are never out of his reach. No matter what the trial may be, God is able to see you through. Welcome to Testimony Tuesdays. I'm Kara. And I'm Bill. And we're Hightower Ministries. So we just want you to get ready. We have an enlightening show for you today that will cause you to see things that have been hidden in plain view. You know, armed with insight, you're going to be able to recognize a form of witchcraft that has been pulling churches apart and causing much pain in the body of Christ. You're going to be able to begin to understand how to advance and take ground through intercession as you begin pulling down strongholds and false arguments that hold people in bondage. So get ready to be blessed. Amen. And viewers, we've been praying and we've been seeking the Lord on your behalf. And we know today is going to be a day of breakthrough. It's a day of victory, a day of transformation for all those that get a chance to watch this broadcast. And we want to encourage you to do one thing before we get started in the show this evening. We want you to think of three people that, that you know that really needs a touch from the Lord, someone that needs a breakthrough in their life, someone that needs an emotional healing, somebody that needs to break free of some things. Because you, you know you may not know their whole situation, but we can guarantee that you know at least one person that you can reach out mm-hmm. to right now. And we encourage you to take about 60 seconds to do that. You know, Give them a quick phone call or drop a uh, little message on the social media and say, here's the link to Hightower Ministries. You know, There's a, there's a Testimony Tuesday show here that's going to bless you. So and we want to encourage you to stay with us over this hour because we believe that God is going to touch you in a significant way. Amen. You know, the Bible says that the word will not return void, but it will do what it was sent forth to do. And we believe today will be a day of transformation, a day of revelation, a day of miracles for many. It, whoever sees this broadcast, they're all over the world. There'll be many all over the world that watches this. And so we want you to do your part and share what the Lord Jesus Christ is doing here on the earth because the lives are being changed you know, because of what we're doing here through High Tower Ministries International. Amen. So share it out. You know, tonight's episode is titled D- Dismantling the Powers of Witchcraft. Ooh, come on. We have a very special guest with us from Newborn, North Carolina. Our guest has been servicing and operating in the fivefold ministry for over 30 years. He is awaited He is weighted with apostolic grace and authority that has been proven with signs, wonders, and miracles. And our guest today has been mantled to function as a prophetic voice who receives supernatural revelation and speaks by divine inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Empowered by the Holy Spirit, he teaches from a dimension of depth and clarity, establishing individuals toward full maturity in Christ. Amen. The Lord has given him a global platform to bring the message of revival and a spirit of awakening to all nations. He has graced many worldwide platforms, including Sid Roth's at Supernatural, CBN, and the Word Network. Our guest is the founder of Elijah Training Center and Cook Revivals. He is also an author, a revivalist, and a prophetic prophet to the nations. So help us welcome with your comments tonight, Prophet Tracy Cook to our show. Welcome, Prophet Tracy. We are so glad and honored to have you with us this evening. Glad to be with you guys as well. It's it's my honor. You know, one of the things I've learned over the 30 years, a servant is there to serve. So we're serving God's people, but also to enlighten them with revelation knowledge that there is an uh, opponent, there is an adversary, and he hits below the bell. So you have, you have to understand that. And, you know, it's just an honor, so. Well, Prophet Tracy, we, we are coming tonight. Oh, praise the Lord. We're Amen. excited for what God is going to do. Uh, you, he's given you so much to, to give to the body of Christ. And and uh, we've come here tonight to, to discuss uh, some vital revelations that the Lord has given you about how Satan has tried to power grab the next move of God through manipulation, intimidation, and fear through witchcraft. Mm-hmm. And your book titled Dismantling the Powers of Witchcraft is spot on. 
and it hit the the, the head of the nail right on the tip Come there on. Uh, with you know about talking about the tactics that the enemy has been using and once your readers take this information in they'll be able to to clearly see a way out from under what they've been dealing with and find freedom and be healed in their innermost being by the spirit of the Lord. Mm-hmm. You know, in chapter one, you teach on the origins of witchcraft and how it all begins with a seed of deception. And just like false teachers, how they ride in on an element of truth and then twist that truth into a falsehood. Could you share with our viewers today how Satan sows seeds of deception into the souls of man? But this is a book that is, is dear to our heart because you really can't do anything for God and accomplish anything on this earth without opposition. Opposition just an indication that you're about to be promoted. So let me just throw that in there real quick because every time there's an opposition, a witchcraft, it's an indication that God's getting ready to unlock the greatness inside it because everyone's anointed for greatness. They just have to find their own identity and operate in there. So... Uh, the first chapter deals with the beginning of the sea of uh, seduction. It's because Isaiah talks about Isaiah 59. He's given us a prime example that cockatrice eggs, danger thoughts, danger that is lurking. That's what cockatrice it really just means, danger that is uh, lurking. Well, the enemy uses witchcraft and dangerous realms that many are so unaware of. They don't understand how the sea begins. The battlegrounds of witchcraft begins in the mind. And in the mind is where you have uh, seeds of witchcraft. And those seeds of witchcraft had to be pulled down. We know that everything that highly sorts itself against the knowledge of truth, we have a position of responsibility to pull down those thoughts of negativity. It's the battlegrounds of witchcraft because the enemy uses what you premeditate on. And then when you verbalize it, it, it can affect us in both directions. And that's what a lot of people don't understand about the origin of witchcraft. Now, in the beginning of this book, uh, I loved it. Dr. Bill Hammond, he read it. He did an endorsement on the founding father of the prophetic movement. He called me up and said, you know, Tracy, I, I love the book. He said, I want you to write another one on it, you know. And that's what we're doing right now. And it's writing the second volume of this book. So, but on this way, one highlight. Now, I'm just going to elaborate and then stay within the outline program as well. All right. Because we're dealing with spiritual jealousy, correct? Yes. All right. The sea of seduction begins through jealousy. Jealousy is cruel as the grave. But jealousy comes through people who are signed against you to elevate you and promote you. So witchcraft is there. What people don't understand that the beginning of witchcraft is there really you got to learn the steps in the battleground. The battleground is where the confrontation comes. It's where everything about you and your anointing, you're going to learn your anointing because that anointing in your life, you're going to pay a price for it. Well, that fight is going to come through the realms of witchcraft more than anything else. So the origin of uh, the original step of witchcraft in this book, it outlines how easy it is for us to fall into deception how easy it is to think that everybody's for you and they're not. Mm-hmm. You begin to understand the more that God trusts your ministry with or the anointing on your life, then you start, you have spiritual jealousy, charismatic witchcraft. We're going to be talking about all that throughout this because what people don't realize, I've done a lot of traveling overseas and everything else. There's no greater witchcraft than charismatic witchcraft when we'll discuss that in depth on this broadcast. <clears throat> I've, I've been up against exorcism. I've been up against warlocks, witches, in every level. And I found nothing is more crucial and cruel than charismatic witchcraft. Jealousy that permeated through people's lives. Want to stop your advancement. You know, we're, we're not there to tear one another down. We're there to what? Build one another up. Mm-hmm. So let me just read this. In Revelation 12 and 4, it deals with... Satan is savor on the earth. He often takes a disguise so we won't recognize him. People don't understand. He's going to come in ways that you don't look for him. Mm-hmm. He's going to showcase himself in ways that we think of Satan. We don't think of him as a, a manipulator, but he is. But he has to use something, one, someone or something to manipulate your purpose. So spiritual jealousy. Mm-hmm. 
Now, y'all can stop me anytime you want because I'm Pentecostal, so I'm long winded. <laughs> so stop anytime. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I'm like the Apostle Paul. I keep preaching to you. Somebody fills over the wind, and then we got to resurrect them and raise the dead. <laughs> so, stop any, anytime you want to stop. Ask your question. Right, you know. right into the next thing we were going to ask you. And absolutely, amen. Because you know, I know chapter one deals with a lot about the deception. Yeah. When when you know the act of causing someone to accept uh, as true or, or or valid what is false or invalid is what you were uh, really teaching in that chapter, that first chapter. Yes. So, um, but, you know, um, you've revealed and exposed a demonic assignment from, from hell against the body of Christ as well here uh, in Christ's church. Mm -hmm. And that's been going on for decades. And it's an assignment that no one really knows how to identify or deal with. And, you know, quite like what the Lord has given you revelation onto. And uh, it's called charismatic witchcraft, which you were just saying. And, and we believe so many in the body of Christ that have been hurt by this and need to know how to identify it and how to deal with it and how to break the power of darkness off their lives mm -hmm. so that they can be set free and, and walk in, in the wholeness that yes. God wants us to walk in. And, you know, you had stated out of all the strongholds we pulled down, this one is the most difficult, but nothing, come on, is impossible with God. So as we go ahead, let's share how they can identify uh, this demonic activity uh, that is normally birthed out of the jealousy in those that are supposed to be serving alongside them in unity and brotherly love. Amen. Yeah. Yes. We, you know, we, we also know in, in Psalm 55, 12 through 14, it says, for, for it, if, it, if it was not an enemy that reproached me, you know, then, I, then I could have borne it. You know, neither was it he that hated me, you know, or magnified himself against me. Then I would have hid my, my, myself from him. Mm -hmm. But it but it was thou, a man, mine equal, my guide, my acquaintance. And we took counsel together and walked in the house of God and company. Amen. So, amen. We want to give it back to you, uh, Prophet Tracy, so you can continue on from where you were there. Yeah, let's definitely talk more about spotting the, the jealous people and, and, and spiritual jealousy. And what God's doing. Well, when you spot now, some of this revelation I'm going to spell on is, is coming on volume two, but it'll help elaborate of where we're at right now. When you talk about spotting jealousy in people, you, you have to understand everybody wants to trust everybody. But the fact of it is witchcraft is cruel. Mm -hmm. Jealousy is real. And we see so many examples in the word of God. What people don't understand is not everybody wants to see your advancement. Not everybody wants to celebrate your promotion. Witchcraft is going to come through people that are close to you. It may be uh, all types of individuals. So charismatic witchcraft, David, the scripture you just got to read, and David is going through a season of betrayal. And when you go through the season of betrayal, betrayal is one of the most important signs of operation of witchcraft. When you start seeing betrayal in the highest level, it's not going to come through a familiar, uh, uh, somebody that you don't know. It's going to come through somebody that's familiar because familiarity breeds confidence. Mm -hmm. And what we don't realize is how do I spot it? How do I recognize it? You recognize it by listening. When I identify the realms of witchcraft over 30 years of traveling, number one, I listen to conversation. I hear the conversation. I discern the hour in which I'm setting it, or whatever setting, whatever table it is, because that's about, we're talking about falsehood and all that as well. We're talking about charismatic witchcraft. See, charismatic witchcraft, and this is the unfortunate part as apostles and prophets, and I'm not going to say this to be negative, it's the truth. There's more witchcraft, charismatic witchcraft, born out of cell groups than is anything else, mm. because people have hidden agendas. And when you have charismatic witchcraft in operation and the flow and its functions, it wants to stop your overall assignment. So then jealousy comes through. You spot it by, okay, I'm listening to the conversation. I'm identifying uh, how they're carrying themselves, how they're conducting themselves, because your mannerism would display where you at as well. So mm. how you conduct yourself, how you, you, okay, what am I going to get out of this? What is the purpose of this setting? And that's how we, we, we have a tendency to get so distracted so easy. We become so vulnerable because the fact of it is apostolic ministries are lonely ministries. Prophets are lonely gifts. 
So out of that, that vulnerability and weakness of those gifts, not the strength of it, weakness, you want friendship. You want to make sure that you fit in every situation and every setting. But the fact of it is, he separate us unto himself. We are made open spectacles. Amen. So therefore, you become vulnerable to the realms of charismatic witchcraft. Unlike warlock, unlike uh, witches levitating, you know, I've been in tent revivals for 30 years as well, witches levitate, that was an easy thing to break. Charismatic witchcraft is breaking the mindset of religious people that think they are better than you, better advanced than you, and don't want to sit and be taught or trained. Mm. That's right. So David recognized betrayal. Betrayal comes through, I thought he said, it would have been different had it been a stranger. But this is not a strange moment. This is not a strange setting. The table's not, the table would never be set, but in the face of an adversary. Adversity, when we face adversity, it challenges the anointing that we carry. And we can't perceive in any other realms of victory. Witchcraft, and I want to say this so everybody can understand. We're not giving credit to witchcraft. We're exposing witchcraft. Amen. We're not giving credit to the devil. We're exposing his lies and his tactics. That's right. We're dismantling that spirit of witchcraft that has come through the form of friendship that's been betrayal, mentors that have turned. I mean, all of this I'm sure we're going to discuss in this hour broadcast because it's needed for people to understand how to watch and spot witchcraft, jealousy. Because jealousy comes, I'll give this quick example, then turn it back over to you guys. And this is not in the notes here, but I'm going to throw the inject this because this is how you spot some of the witchcraft as well. Paniah could not birth, Paniah birthed several uh, sons, seven children to Echonai. Hannah could not birth any, mm -hmm. so God shut her womb up. So then you have the spirit of jealousy in the same household. One woman that has a womb that is barren cannot birth forth purpose. One that's bearing forth many children. So then you have jealousy because Hannah's more favored by Elkaniah and by God. But the problem is this, when we no longer can discern what's in our home and what's our surroundings. That's where we come into charismatic witchcraft. Yes, and, and, and it all it is rooted in pride and envy. Uh, you know, and, and we, the key is to stay humble. Uh, you, I mean, you were teaching in your book, and we, we all know that, you know, our key is to stay humble, but recognize, um, you know, it's, it's not about you. It's about your calling. It's about the anointing that's on you. And, um, and, and that we need to focus really on where God is taking you. Know, ta focus on where God's taking you. Yes. And don't get caught up comparing yourself or comparing your ministry with someone else's ministry. Would you like to elaborate on that? Uh, that's a million dollar question there. And that's a very good one. <laughs> and unfortunately, and this is the sad thing about it, because there should never be competition in the body of Christ. Come on. There should never be a competitive spirit. That's enough to do in this planet. The mission fields around the world. Our own by yours, our mission field. Mm -hmm. But what we don't understand is when you deal with charismatic witchcraft in the church, it's the most dangerous area of witchcraft. Because whatever you set under, you become like. And in the church, unfortunately, this is the problem. The word disciple means to be taught, trained, developed. Not many wants to sit at the feet and be trained. You can't get promotion until you're submitted. That's People right. with wrong spirit, wrong attitude. They want promotion. They want platforms. They want to be seen. They want the forefront. Well, you're going to begin to operate in charismatic witchcraft, and you're not going to be. Uh, you're not going to recognize it because it's not familiar at first. You're going to think, "Hey, I'm in the church. Here I am, leaders. I've seen so many leaders, unfortunately, take on the characteristic of witchcraft because of power, influence, and manipulation." That's we right. are never to be leaders. Any fivefold ministry gift, especially the apostles and prophets, we're never to use authority and power to manipulate our audience, our members, our nation, or our community. Come on. We are world changers. We are pioneers. Mm -hmm. And now that witchcraft, unfortunately, has weaved itself in the full walls of the church through the spirit of Jezebel. Now, I, I elaborate deeper in the second volume on the spirit of Jezebel that fights the apostolic churches. But in this book, I, I, I spend a lot of time dealing with the individual, the church as a whole. 
And the one reason is that because charismatic witchcraft comes through individuals that has the tendency to not to, uh, have awareness that they've been used by the enemy. We're going to be used by the Holy Spirit or we're going to be used by the adversary of our faith, against our faith. So now in the church, and I really love this outline, guys, it's, it's, it's marvelous. You know, many times I did a lot of interview and I said, oh, Lord Jesus, help us through it, you know. Uh -huh. But you guys are very, very gifted in this. And I want to say this, leaders, as leaders, no matter how many years you've been in ministry, there's always going to be a tendency to say, all right, never change a servant's heart. You know, mm -hmm. Brother Shambach taught me this when I was spent many times with him and other great men of God. He, he said, Tracy, long as you don't ever get away from a servant's heart, a servant's mind, that's no, that's no telling where you can go. Even Dr. Bill Hammond, the, you know, one of the greatest prophets I've ever met was so transparency, so you could sit at the table, eat with him. And I mean, it just it was the same no matter where he was. Many leaders and lay people that are dealing with church hurts and uh, gross disappointment. See, we don't want to say that because we don't understand apostolic order. Mm -hmm. Apostolic order is not functioning. Your anointing is not predicated upon crowds. If you are assigned to five people, enjoy the ministry. If you're assigned to 500, enjoy it. If you're assigned to five million, enjoy it. That's the problem that we often find, that we don't understand our metron or our measure. Joel says, stay in your range. That word range means metron, measure, because when you get outside your measure, here come charismatic witchcraft. Pride enters in. That's All right. of a sudden now, you know, I want to be on these major Christian networks. Well, that, that's not always the case. It's where, wherever God sends us on our assignment, it's where we have authorization against the powers of darkness. We Ooh, break man. witchcraft when we're authorized. Whatever assignment we have in that area that God sends us, especially as fivefold ministry gives, or if you're watching, you're, you're a part of the fivefold ministry, your assignment is based upon the authority that God's authorized you in that area. And when you leave that area to go to someone else's domain, you're unauthorizing illegally, and you take on witchcraft, and you cannot conquer it. Come on. That is so good. That is good stuff We're going to right talk to a, about a different aspect of this for a moment, if that's yeah, okay with you. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. So we're going to go a little bit deeper and talk about some tough things and the things that most people keep to themselves because they really don't know how to deal with it. And they're embarrassed because their family isn't really supportive as they should be or people would expect them to be. So we really want to talk right now about recognizing and dealing with charismatic witchcraft in the family. In your own family. Among mothers and fathers and sisters, brothers, cousins, whatever. You know, in your book, you had a loaded question for your readers, and it was, what do you do when your own mother, the one that has cooked for you and made your bed as uh, you were growing up, is now preparing your bed for your destiny of destruction? I mean, come on. You know, we, we wonder how many people out there are suffering suffering silently because a, a parent isn't happy uh, and they're not succeeding in, in answering the call of God on their lives, right? So uh, we want you to please share uh, with the viewers how to spot charismatic witchcraft in the family. Yeah, when, when a parent's not really happy about their, you know, or uh, someone, a cousin or an aunt or uncle or someone in the fam their own family are not happy about them answering their call right, of yeah. God. But one thing you, you know, the hardest battle in the world is, you know, there's no greater portrayal than uh, charismatic witchcraft in the family. It comes, you know, it, even that we just uh, touched, highlighted on leadership, and that can be very detrimental to someone's ministry gift because you, you know, you, you get you get so attached, but then all of a sudden, you know, not everybody's rejoicing with your promotion. But mm -hmm. when you start dealing with charismatic and witchcraft in the family, you have to think about, there's many examples I want to give here, but I'll highlight a revelation that can help the audience, and that's in the life of David. Through his eyes, we see the panorama view of portrayal in the household. We see in 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, especially 1 Samuel 17 throughout chapter 19, David is ostracized by his own family. He's never considered to be uh, one that can really make a difference in Israel. But whom God calls, he equips. Come when, on. You're dealing with, when you're dealing with charismatic witchcraft in the family, you're dealing with it because someone's chosen and someone was not. 
Someone has been appointed and anointed, and someone is there to serve you. Mm. And unfortunately, the brothers of David, they were invited to the battle uh, against Goliath in Valley Elah, uh, servants of Saul. But the problem with this, neither one of them was appointed to take on the giants in Israel. David was ostracized. Now, his own family, his own father, and when we think about this, all right, his own father did not even include him worthy enough to fight in the battle against the Philistines and the nation of Israel. He was never considered at all. Mm. He was not even mentioned around the table. He was just told to stay with a few sheep. So when you get charismatic, uh, not only in the ministry, not only in leadership, but in your family, it's, it's so detrimental because now who can you trust if you can't trust the ones that birthed you into society, brought you into the world, when you can't even trust your own mother and your own father? Yeah. That's why Elijah had to tell you, Elijah, break the odds. He said, but I want to go serve my father. Make up your mind. You want to follow this or you don't want to follow this? Come because on. the fact of the matter is, even your own household, I've seen it so many times in all my travelings that people, when they start getting a call of God, witchcraft, they, they, you know, you'll never think that a sister would fight a sister or a brother would fight brother. You would never think that. One's appointed to be a pastor. The other one's appointed to help that pastor, but they want to be pastor and God's never chose them. So now, we think that's elementary, but in fact, it's a root cause of division that found among our own families. Mm. Just like David and his house, out of the house of Ben V. But God took that 17 year old young man and his brother said, well, is that not a cause? It was a cause worthy enough to be there at the right moment of place because it takes a kingly anointing to take down the giants. Amen. Not just a family member, a family member, just a family member. But when you're chosen with that kingly anointing, then that's the realms of witchcraft, but you have to learn how to deal with it with your family members. And really, this has been a tough one for me to write about and to share, to be honest, because I have to bite that apple many times with family because nothing is more hurtful and more painful when you don't have everybody rooting for you in your own house. Mm -hmm. Amen. We, we understand that. And, uh, you know, when, when you when you saw, you know, like when you succeed, you, you even mentioned it in your book. It feels like you're getting those javelins, javelins thrown at you, thrown at you, uh, you know, or or re congratulations come reluctantly, yeah. and they just don't rejoice with you really like they should be. Uh, yeah. when God is blessing you or doing something through you. Right yeah. uh, one of the reason why is because they don't understand their purpose. Mm -hmm. They're blinded by different types of witchcraft. When we use the terminology witchcraft, we got to identify. And this is, I'm going to throw this out just real quickly. Uh, you have to identify witchcraft in all of this realm and all of the spirits. Now, we didn't elaborate on the spirit of Jezebel or the spirit of Eli or the spirit of Pharaoh or there's uh, so many of them that fights the apostolic ministry and families or spirit of Leviathan. All of those are root spirits that operates in some form of witchcraft to rob you of, first and foremost, your identity. Mm -hmm. So families that don't have, just like Esau and Jacob, two brothers, one sold his identity, mm -hmm. which began to get operation. Then the other one become hunted. So when we lose our identity, we fall prey to witchcraft, charismatic witchcraft in our family, because everybody that God anoints in our family is not to do your assignment or vice versa. Right. But unfortunately, you don't see that today. And it's because it's like the spirit of Gehazi. They want promotion before it's time to get promoted. Right. Amen. Mm, Amen. On. It's that's loaded. Uh, well, we're going to go back. To, we're going to go back to the heavy, heavier topic. It, well, it's a, that's a heavy topic, but we're going to go back over and we're going to talk about how uh, many leaders and lay people out there have been dealing with, uh, you know, church hurt and, and growth disappointments in church leadership. And the Lord has been exposing what has been hidden so that the, his true church can really break free and arise. And in your book, you wrote about David being hunted down by his, his spiritual father, and you sympathized with your readers that they may be familiar with that feeling. And that's what we've been talking about, um, that someone that you want, you know, you trusted, you, you, you look and you go, you know, I thought that they were going to always be with me. I right. thought that, 
uh, you know, or I would have always been under that ministry or, um, you know, somebody that you respected is now really seeking to try to ruin your reputation uh, because, uh, you know, because of this thing. So please expound on the characteristics of charismatic witchcraft in ministry leaders so that it can be pinpointed to the viewers so they'll be able to recognize what they're really dealing with because there's there's certain characteristics that you could be looking for. Well, the first one is, is intimidation. You know, intimidation, I'm intimidated with you, I'm threatened by you. Now, this is the unfortunate part. A mentor, a spiritual father, a spiritual mother is always supposed to they always supposed to take the back seat to elevate the sons, the daughters. The problem with majority mentors today, nobody wants to pass on the baton. Mm. You can't you can't keep the baton all your days. There has to be a Joshua generation. There has to be a de decrease of Moses and an increase of Joshua's. So you have intimidation. Saul, for over 10 years, David served him faithfully. But God began to bring purpose out of David. See, what's, what's hilarious about the life of David is this. God used something foolish to bring forth prophecy over his life. I, I, I paraphrase it today, a slice of pizza. Go take, go take food and go check on your brothers. Well, it fulfilled prophecy. Taking food brought prophecy to pass. We don't like that. that it sounds kind of uh, silly and nonsense, but look how easy and how awesome it is. God used something so foolish to put David in place of promotion so he could be mentor. But he sent a mentor to him at first, loved him, started out loving him. Mm -hmm. But he became intimidated because David, everybody was dancing in the streets, singing Saul 1,000, David 10,000. Mm -hmm. That spirit of intimidation. I'm intimidated. Even though I'm crowned king of Israel, I'm intimidated because that was a prophecy that the neighbor will be greater than what he is. Mm -hmm. We often don't think the power of prophecy, how it works and orchestrates our life. We have existed today because of prophecy, the power of prophecy and not getting off of the message because we, we speak in the atmosphere and we break witchcraft by prophesying against it. We tear it down by prophesying. We're not gonna give room to it. But also too, we're not gonna give room to intimidation. That spirit of intimidation, it robs you of your identity. That's right. Saul lost his identity. He no longer saw himself as a threat against the enemy. So now he becomes intimidated because a young lad who had a relationship with God, that word might in Psalm 23 means I have an encounter, a personal encounter with God. I've been trained through the bear, the lions, and the giant, and this is nothing else. But now David is facing something that's going to be detrimental, but also advancement to him. And the thing about intimidation, also a lot of times they will try to intimidate. So if they're intimidated, they will try to intimidate back by using humor or scar sarcasm to belittle a person, that person Absolutely. they're intimidated by, uh, you know, to, to make jokes at their expense. That's right. I mean, these type of things are, are kind of telltales. Yeah. Well, they do that because... They don't really believe that they're called or assigned. Mm -hmm. Because anybody that's really called or assigned, they first and foremost, they know it is no red carpet. There is no red, there's no such thing as a red carpet to the apostolic ministries. <laughs> it's soul dust and dust and dirt. Come and you on. learn how to walk there first. So and you might be bleeding and leaving a trail of blood behind you, but that there's, no, there's, no, there's no red carpet before you. No. It's just, no. it's, it's, you know, and, and, and people are sarcastic because they they want to take the forefront. Mm -hmm. They want to, they, it's that spirit of witchcraft that comes on them. They'll say, you know, if I'm not getting the attention, I'm going to draw away from you. Mm -hmm. While you're not seeking for the attention, they're there to take it. They're, that sarcasm spirit begins to operate. It's like they, they told David, who are you? You left a few sheep with who? Now, we, you left sheep without a shepherd? No, David was smart. He left in the hands of a keeper. But they've been sarcastic because they were threatened by his anointing and his position and his influence. Another characteristic you mentioned was manipulation, how they pretend to be concerned about you in order really to get information against you. Well, manipulation... What they want to do, they want to find out 
everything about you so they can turn the information against you. Mm. Why have you done this? Then David said, what is that? I was on an apostolic assignment. See, his father sent him. So the word apostolic means sent. Go check on your brothers. Take them some food. But there was a, a demonic spirit over that territorial spirit over that region that had to come down. That territorial spirit had to be broken, dismantled, had to dismantle that spirit of witchcraft. So now we see manipulation like I want to intimidate you so you can second guess why you're here. So they were trying to manipulate David's character, his stance, his prayer life, his worship and life unto God. So that spirit of manipulation comes because they want to seek out information. Witchcraft always wants to seek out information. Mm -hmm. it, wants, it wants insight of who you are that you're not willing to share yet. And unfortunately, many go ahead of the timing of their calling and they blur it out like Joseph and they go through the pit because they gave out too much information because of the spirit of manipulation. That's right. You know, it's, it's all really driven by... Uh, insecurity, isn't it? Yes, sir, it is. Insecurity. Yeah. And we, we've seen domination. You you had mentioned domination and 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 we've we've seen we've seen things, we've heard things where Absolutely. the people get yelled at. Uh, they would be do they're dominated in a in a in a fleshly way. To make them second um, guess. To make them second guess. Mm. Uh huh. Yeah. So um domination domination is cruel as well guys i mean it's but when, when a leader has to use the spirit of domination it's, it's really the spirit of pharaoh that's where you had domination come that spirit operates in leadership that no longer have confidence in their own calling their own ability to hear god and they have experience but they like discernment so they want to i was in one setting no name no blame done burnt the shirt uh i was in one setting and i said lord have mercy how could i be on this platform it would just it looked like uh, taskmaster all over. And I said, Lord, how nobody's going to get healed and deliver if, if you don't do something and put some people in check and balance. And unfortunately, it's sad to say it's out there today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Really Absolutely. And, and you, you also mentioned clicks, you know, us for no more type of attitude uh, or this little group. Um, I wanted to just mention that because these are telltales. These are characteristics. Right. They are characteristics. <laughs> This is happening, that, that charismatic witchcraft is happening in uh, ministry leaders. So if you're seeing cliques, uh, you know, that's us for and, and no more attitude, uh, that's something to, that's a flag. Uh, jealousy, of course, comp competition, um, always comparing. Mm -hmm. uh, and then gossip was a is a big one. Gossip. Yeah, gossip. We call it, we, we call it not gossip, but sharing, but it's all still the same. <laughs> I had one. I had one say, "No, sir, we we ain't gossip. We ain't gossip." I said, "No, but you're sharing." <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Yeah. It is. It, it is manipulative because it undermines your uh, the integrity of others, yes. and uh, and it and it really does um, keep you keep you in a place of in, inferiority if someone's gossiping about you or and and uh, yeah, it's 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 not good. None of it's good. So. No, it's, it's not good. It's hurtful because you're trying you're trying your very best to be the leader that God called you to be. And unfortunately, as one of my spiritual fathers told me, as long as you and these bars of bones, the house of soul, you still got to deal every day of taking the inventory and letting God work it out in your own life as you go through the process until God perfect us when he calls us all home. Amen. But that gospel, that gospel spirit is it can do much damage in ministries. It can, whether it's true or false, it can do damaging. But we have to be careful how we prejudge individuals or ministry because we can find ourselves being judged the same way that we judge. You know. Well, Come you know on. that is so that is so important. We've 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 talked about this ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you know the Lord tells us you know to you know to not be a busybody, That's and right. uh, we're not supposed to, we're not supposed to be in other people's affairs and in, in, in looking into what was going on in their life, and also. When God is dealing with something, it's our, our people, and He's exposing some things, and the judgment's happening. Uh, if, if you know, we're not to be, um, we're not to be talking about it and um, excited about it that you know, that things are bad things are happening to anyone. That's right. We're to pray for them for mercy and and for deliverance and healing. Amen. Because that that is the heart of God. Um, so you know, if, if we if we touch something that God's judging. He said that in his word that he would lift his hand off 
of it, um, you know, some. So it's like, you know, you, we just need to let God be God Amen. and uh, stay humble. Amen. Yeah, that's right. So as we're talking about this, you know, um, it's really important for the viewers that are dealing with this among leadership in their church uh, to, to really know how to, to handle this uh, biblically, uh, because it's a tough thing to go through. So could you really uh, help and explain to the viewers um, how they, they can really handle this biblically? And go through and, and get free. Yes. But, you know, we're going to outline several of these because they're all valuable and important to how to deal with it when you see uh, individuals or situations, scenarios that will occur. You know, uh, David is another great example, not that he was perfect in by no means, but he deals with it when Jonathan and Saul was in battle and both of them were killed. A runner comes to David, say, you know, he was rejoicing. Hey, Saul is there. Here's the crown. And he mm -hmm. said, how did it happen? He said, I push him over on the sword. Uh, he was, you know, just I like, hey, I'm so excited about this. I can't wait to tell King David. I can't. He's going to be King David. David had him killed because he did not. He didn't fear to touch God. He said Saul, even his backsliding condition was still God's anointing. That's Amen. right. Come on. He's, see. What they don't understand is when ministers go through a season where they feel like they're bot slaying, then you got charismatic witchcraft that's in the middle fighting their ministry, fighting their confidence, fighting their identity. It's no place for us to rise up and destroy it. God mm -hmm. alone is going to be the judge. And whatever's not right, God's big enough right by himself to deal with it. Come on. And the, real, the real apostolic protocol, no sheep, no individual has the right to approach a leader that's fallen. But there's a Nathan that would be assigned to do that privately. Amen. That's the protocol of the apostolic church. That takes out, it takes a Nathan to bring a king back to submission and humility. But see, we, we have that mindset today that we want to prove everybody right or everybody wrong. And we don't realize we're operating in witchcraft. Come we're on. operating in the seas of deception. And we're weaving contradictions eggs in our mind. It's going to be vipers. And what we're doing, we're poisoning the gospel. And now people are turning away from the gospel because we have not allowed God. Uh, Peter said, how many times shall I forgive my brother? He said, seven times. Seven. He said, no. Peter had to learn in his own walk with God that God is merciful. The merit of favor of God. Humility. You have to approach it with humility. Thirty years ago, I may have vowed to the Lord. God spoke to me, said, there, there'll never be one thing stand before your prayers as long as you stay humble and give me the glory. Mm. Humility shows that you can take correction, you can be rebuked, but also too, it shows you that you're ready for promotion. That's how you deal with it in your setting. And then other characteristics is respect. Mm -hmm. Respect the authority, the office, the mantle, pray for repentance, pray for deliverance. Don't, you know, don't get on the phone and gossip about it because really you're signing judgment to yourself. That's why they don't realize. See, the power, right. the power of the prophet has a creative force to bring forth that word. We the mouthpieces of God. He Amen. said, don't touch, touch not my anointing, do my prophets no harm. So when, right. we get to, when we get to that realm that we want to touch what God's trying to correct or trying to heal or trying to deliver, and we go off there and we get into tangent and we gossip about or we want to tear down that ministry or whatever the case may be, we sign judgment that ain't nothing going to come. It, nothing. It, it, old saying say, Ajax is not going to be able to take it off. Because God's sending it. We have to be careful. You know, everybody, no matter how long you've been with the Lord, short or long, there's going to be some faults. There's going to be some shortcomings. That's why you have mentors. That's why you have veteran prophets, veterans, apostles, fathers and mothers in the gospel to help mentor you, not to tear That's you down. Right. Mm -hmm. And anybody there to tear you down is not advancing you or good for you, and you don't need it. That's so right. respect. So it's important to know when it's time to leave a fellowship as well, isn't it, Prophet Tracy? It is. I went through this, and uh, this is in my, my second book that we're writing called Saul's House. You graduate from Saul's House. <laughs> I want to leave, and, and I'm not going to name that because I don't do that, but I want to leave this ministry so bad. I said, Lord, I feel like he's the, he's the devil in disguise. <laughs> I, thought this, I thought this apostle was one of the worst men of God that God could ever train me in. But it took that kind of training to develop me over the 30 years. And finally, I, would, I got to the place I had to forgive him, I had to release it from my spirit. This is going to help somebody because I'm a very transparent person. 
this is something I had to learn the very hard way because you can't leave until you released by God or you're going to operate in divination instead of words of knowledge, instead of gifts of the spirit. You're going to operate in familiarity. If you try to lead the ministry because you got hurt there and God has not released you and you try to go do your own thing or try to join another ministry, that's going to follow you. David said, if I had wings like a dove, I'd just fly away and be at rest. But he realized I had to go through Saul's house in order to perfect David's house. That's right. So that's, that's that Saul mentality. You got to go through that Saul ducking them javelins. You're not invited at the table. You, you've been hunted. The anointing is on your life. God's getting ready to bring you forth to great dimensions. You're learning how to dismantle witchcraft. You know, you learned the level of the season, family, your friends. You want to build a healthy relationship. But now you cannot release yourself. But when that moment is released, how do you know, Prophet, when you release? You know. That's a, that's a, that, that's a knowing. It's like, I know, I know that I know that I know. And then all of a sudden, you're the most happiest individual in the world. You're like, God, I passed this test. Well, oh, you're, you, I can tell you that he's moving you, but you might have to sit there for a year or two before he releases you. So you, yeah. you, you already feel it. You already know that God's doing something, but he hasn't released you, like you said. But when you know it, you know it. You know it. And then he, and then he opens the other door. He opens the door. Yes. He does. Yeah. He, he closed that door. Mm -hmm. And he'll train you, test you, try you with everything you got. But and a lot of times that, he'll confirm it too through other prophets. He will. He'll give you confirmation, mm -hmm. affirmation. He'll do different things through prophets and different ways that he speaks. And there's several different ways how God really speaks to us. But those are some of the ways that he give you confirmation. And say, all right, your season is up. You passed the test. Square <laughs> your shoulders. I've got an assignment for you to do. I've got a ministry for you to do. You know, you went through Saul's house. You had the ducks and javelins. Rejoice about it. When you see them in the marketplaces or the grocery store, you can shake their hands. You can smile at them and say, thank you. Thank you so Man. much. I had to get back several years to uh, to a bishop. That I thought, I said, Lord, I, I ain't got nothing against him or anything. I, I finally had, a, I saw him in the marketplace. I said, thank you so much for all the training. He said, I don't understand what you said. I said, no, you didn't see how you would been, how you trained me and developed me. Thank you. Because you built more humility. And mm -hmm. that's how I would encourage leaders. You know what I'm saying? That's, that is, That's that good. is excellent. That is yeah. excellent. And we want to encourage also the, the viewers to always believe the word of the Lord over your life, no matter what, no matter what, what is what you see, no matter what is going on around you. Because like, like prophet Tracy is saying, there's people that are in your life that, that are there to, uh, to, to be that rough rock, Come to on. smooth you out to you there. They're the sandpaper in your life, but you've got to can stay firm on the word of the Lord over your life and what God has spoken to you. And you just keep praying, uh, praying that word. Amen. And, and tap into God's strength and nail your problems to the cross. Amen. Nail everything that, that the enemy is, is, is trying to, to shoot at you. Break, nail it on the cross and start decreeing and declaring the word of the Lord back over. Because there's nothing stronger than the blood of Jesus. Amen. Absolutely. We, we got to apply the blood of Jesus. That's right. So we want, want to ask you to, to encourage the viewers, uh, you know, you know, that have come through. Or maybe they're going through these things right now. Uh, what what would you what would you say? What would be on your heart for them? Before you know, I'll, I'll say this. All right, there's always going to be these places, and I'm just going to quickly just mention one of them. The Valley of Becca. It's the place of weeping, being broken, finding your identity, moving out of identity crisis. See, charismatic witchcraft. It wants to come out information, but it wants to rob your identity. Keep your identity. Know who you are in God. He told the disciple, who do men say that I am? And finally, Peter got the revelation. Prophecy was unlocked. Then God started building the church with authority and power that the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. A new form of witchcraft is going to, you know, even though witchcraft is a sign against you because of your mandate, the mission, and the mantle you carry, always be encouraged and know that greater he that's in us than he that's in the world. And you have the power to dismantle any form of witchcraft. As long as you stay in the realm of prayer and fasting, understand mentorship, understand leadership, following the order protocol, and you, listen, that's why I would encourage you. Every one of us go through a different season in our life. I understand what season you in. I understand what force of witchcraft is fighting you, but never be intimidated. A good friend of mine is a world boxing champion, and he taught me this. He said, the devil always hit below the belt, 
but never be intimidated that you already champion before you get in the ring. Come you on. Can it, you can overcome it. That's what I would encourage the audience with. Amen. Well, Prophet Tracy, will you please pray for the viewers and break the powers of witchcraft that they've that have kept them held back from fulfilling the call of God on their lives? Absolutely. Father, in the name of Jesus, as I pull my hands through the lens of this camera, of having this opportunity and the honor, I break every form of witchcraft, every cosmetic witchcraft that come through manipulation, domination, jealousy, intimidation. I break that spirit off of your ministry, off of your family, off of your finances, off of your business. I command the devil to loose his hold. I break the spirit of witchcraft that are trying to operate in your region. I tear down their territorial spirits. As a governmental gift of God that is signed to speak into the airways right now, I come against every light of Satan that been perpetrated and spoken to your thought pattern, into your spirit. I counsel the plans of the enemy. I sever the arm of the enemy. I break his bows. I snap his arrows. And I command the release of the Holy Spirit, the release of the anointing to go to every home, every life that breaks sickness, disease. Uh, generational curses. I break it under the authority of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I counsel the plans of the enemy. I dismantle, I dismantle every lie, every rumor, every incident, every opposition to stop in your advancement in your ministry, your family, every area of your life. I command a release of angels at your beck and call. I command the power and supernatural strength of the Holy Spirit to aid you, to get you back on your feet, to march Put on the armor of God. I command victory in every area as God's prophet in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Wow. Praise, Praise the, the Lord. Lord. I, I tell you, this has been such a powerful time. Uh, this broadcast, I know, is going to help many. And, you know, it always seems to go so fast. It does, doesn't and, it? And, you know, you just want to keep going and going. And uh, for, for time's sake, you know, we, we have to, unfortunately... Uh, come to the end of the broadcast. But before we do, uh, Prophet Tracy, we would love for you uh, to please share with our viewers how they can get connected with your ministry and obtain a copy of your incredible book, Dismantling the Power of Witchcraft. And also, I know you have other books and, and uh, teachings there that you can, you can share with the viewers. So, uh, you know, it's just been a really an extreme pleasure having you with us on the show today. And we would love to have you back. Just saying. <laughs> we would love to have Any, you back. Paul. Anytime guys, it'd be, it'd, it'd be my honor to help serve whatever I can do to make the difference in people's lives. It's a link there on Cook's Revival's uh, Facebook page right now. As you're watching, that's a link below how you can order the book. Listen, it will help you. It's years and years of learning the operation and the functions of Jezebel. I encourage you, order the book, let it be a blessing, get it for a friend that's fighting charismatic witchcraft, fighting the spirit and their friends, their family, their ministry, leadership. It helps expose where the enemy is at operation. Mm -hmm. And when you get this book, it'll give you insight and nuggets where you can help develop your walk more in God. You'll see the enemy for who he is. In the face of all adversities, you'll begin to learn how to dismantle that, what characteristics to look for, and what to avoid. Because there are many things we have to avoid as well, or we'll be dominated by manipulation, intimidated in our own ministry and calling. So that's what I was, uh, this book is really about. I, I did it for the simple reason I wanted to expose the tactics and the plans and the weapons of the enemy to help you get out of that, that place where you're depressed, discouraged, get back on your feet. You got a call to do, you got a mandate to do, you got a mandate to pick up, you got a mission to complete. And this exposes why the enemy is after you. The devil, remember this, the devil's not attacking you from where you're at, but where you're going. Come, Come on. on. That good. is so good. Mm. Well, we're going to have the, the link to get a hold of Prophet Tracy Cook and Cook Revivals underneath the comments there. We encourage all the viewers to get connected with their ministry, yes. uh, sow into their ministry as well. It's good ground. Mm. And make sure you get your copy of Dismantling the Powers of Witchcraft. This this book will change some people's lives. It'll help you to get set free. And uh, we're looking forward to having you back with us, Prophet Tracy. Absolutely. We hope you're back with us in the fall. Absolutely. Anytime, guys, we'll make room in the schedule. It's been Thanks. my honor. Uh, Pastor Bill and Pastor Carl, it's been my honor. It's been a privilege to have Kingdom Connection. You know, I'm, I'm so uh, always rejoicing and joy when you connect because we all got a purpose in this planet God put us all here for a reason. 
and you can't, no man's island, no man can stand by himself. So we need one another. Amen. Amen. Iron sharp as iron. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It surely does. Well, we just really thank you for being with us today. And yeah, we just... want to thank all the viewers out yes. there for joining us here at Hightower Ministries International for our Testimony Tuesday broadcast. And we hope that this show has edified and encouraged you in the Lord. Amen. And, and we, we have a, you know, a, a ministry healing ministry service coming up that we really want to get you uh, to come out to. If you're in the Tidewater area, we're going to be uh, ministering to those these deep hurts and, and uh, emotional healing uh, in, our, in our service that we're going to have at the Holiday Inn Conference Center. It's going to be on May 27th at 7 p.m. And I want to encourage you to come out for a night of refreshing. It's going to be a glorious time in the Lord. And we believe that many people will, be, will get broken free of some of these things that we discussed tonight. So uh, put it on your calendar, May 27th at 7 p.m. at the Holiday Inn Conference Center. It's at 5655 Greenwich Road. It, it's here in the resort area of Virginia Beach, Virginia. And, and, uh, and so don't miss it. It's going to be an incredible night. Amen. That's right. So it's going to be an evening of refreshing it's going to be a night of healing. It's going to be a night of deliverance for so many. So plan on joining us. Pastors, bring groups uh, with you out. Uh, we, we would love to meet with you and, and plan to join us as we come together in the Lord's presence and watch him do what he does best. And that's love people. Amen. Set them free and, and deliver them. Amen. So if, if this ministry has been been a blessing to your life, we want to, you to prayerfully consider also partnering with High Tower Ministry. It's good ground. And I know God will bless you. You can easily get connected with High Tower Ministries at Linktree at High Tower Ministries. And there you will find many uh, resources, uh, our Sunday services, revival services, and our special ministry meetings. That's right. And so you will also be linked directly to High to our Ministries International Facebook page with one click of a button, and you can enjoy up to uh, five broadcasts that we have going out each week. That's right. Uh, live services, Greater Glory broadcasts, which is our prophetic teaching and preaching, uh, apostolic training and discipleship, and of course, Testimony Tuesdays. Amen. Each and every Tuesday, we have special guests, yep. guests with us. Uh, like Prophet Tracy tonight, that just really have a wealth of knowledge. They're generals in the faith. They're fivefold ministry and lay people that come together to to edify the body of Christ. Amen. And what Amen. the Lord has given them to share. And there's so much for you that happened here uh, at, on Testimony Tuesday and also with uh, the Greater Glory shows. And we just really encourage you to go to Linktree. Uh, at High Tower Ministries, so you can get connected. Amen. And by a click of a button, also you can get directly connected to our WDN Podcast Network, where you can enjoy over 270 downloadable free messages, podcasts that you can just take us on the go. Amen. So also make sure you visit our YouTube channel and subscribe. Hit that bell so you don't miss a show that goes out right on YouTube as well. Amen. If you have prayer requests, please reach out with your prayer request as well. And again. Go to Prophet Tracy's link tree as well. He's got all these same type of resources. Would yes. Get connected with both of our ministries. You know God is good ground and God's going to bless you. Amen. Amen. So we just so encourage you to uh, to uh, reach out to us also. If you have pastors, if you're looking for guest mm -hmm. ministry to be a part of your conferences, you can reach us at bookings at hightowerministry.org. Amen. So thank you for joining us today. And don't forget to share this with your friends. And until next time, be blessed. Be blessed.